This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Betsy Bush. Marquette, Michigan, July 2006. Warlord of Corps by Terry Carr. Chapter 4. Manning's quarters were larger than most of the prefab structures in the new earth town. The building was out near the end of one of the streets, a single-storied plastic and metal box on a quick concrete slab base. Well, it was as well constructed as any of the buildings in the Edge Planet Falls, Ranson reflected as he knocked on the door, and there was room for all of the survey team workers. Manning himself let him in grabbing his hand in a firm grip that nevertheless lacked the man's usual heavy jovality. "'Come on in. The others are already here,' Manning said, and walked ahead of him into the larger of the two rooms inside. His step was brisk as always, but there was a touch of real hurry in it, which Ryanson noticed immediately. Manning was worried about something. "'All right. We're all set,' Manning said, leaning against a wall at the front of the room. Ryanson found a seat on the arm of a chair next to Mara and Mark Stoworth, a slightly heavy, blond-haired man in his thirties, who wore his hair cut short on the sides, but long in the back. He looked like every one of the young corporation executives Ryanson had seen in the outworlds, and probably would have gone into that kind of position if he'd had the connections. He certainly seemed out of place even among the varied assortment of the types who worked the archaeological and geological surveys. But these surveys were conducted by the big corporations who were interested in developing the outworlds. Probably Stoworth hoped eventually to move up into the lower management offices when the corporations moved in. "'Gentlemen, there's something very wrong about these dumb horses we've been dealing with,' Manning said. "'I'm going to throw out a few facts at you, and see if you don't come to the same conclusions that Larsberg and I did.' Ryanson leaned over to Mara and murmured, "'What's his problem today?' but she was frowning. He's got a real one. Listen. Manning had picked up a sheaf of typescript from the table next to him, and was flipping through it. His lips pursed grimly. This is the report I got yesterday from Larsberg here. Architecture and various other artifacts. It's very interesting. Herb, throw your first photo onto the screen. The lights went off, and the screen in the wall beside Manning lit up with a reproduction of one of the Herlegy structures out on the flat. It stood in the shadow of an overhanging rock cliff, protected from the planet's heavy winds on three sides. Larsborg had apparently set up lights for a cleaner picture. The whole building stood out sharply against the shadows of the background. "'This look familiar to any of you?' Manning said quietly. For a moment, Ryanson continued to stare uncomprehending at the picture. He had seen a lot of the Herlegy buildings since they'd landed. This one was better preserved, but not essentially different in design. Larsborg had cleared away most of the dirt and sand which had been packed up against its sides, exposing the full height of the structure, and he'd apparently sandblasted the carved designs over the entrance. But— Then he realized what he was seeing. The angle of the photo was a bit different than that from which he'd seen the other structure back on Tentar Eleven. But the similarity was unmistakable. This was a reproduction in stone of that same building, the one they had reconstructed two years before. He heard a wave of voices growing around the room, and Manning's voice cut through it with, "'That's right, gentlemen. It's an outsider's building. It's not in that crazy damned metal or alloy or whatever it was that they used, but it's the same design. Take a long look at it before we go on to the next photo.' Ryanson looked closely. Yes, it was the same design, a bit cruder, and the carvings weren't the same, but the lines of the doorway and the cornice. The next picture flashed onto the screen. It was a close-up of the designs over the entrance, shot in sharp relief so that they stood out starkly. The room was so quiet that Ryanson could hear the hum behind the screen in the wall. "'That's outsider stuff, too,' said Brune. "'It's not quite the same, though. Distorted.' "'It's carved in stone and not stamped in metal,' Manning said. "'It's the same thing, all right. Anybody disagree?' "'No one did.' "'All right, then, let's have the lights back up again.' The lights came on, and once more there was a murmur of talking around the room. Ryanson shifted his position on the seat and tried to catch the thought that had slipped through his mind just before the screen had faded. There was another similarity. 
Well, he'd seen a lot of the outsider buildings in the past few years. It wasn't necessary to trace all the evidences right now. "'What I want to know is, why didn't any of the rest of you see this?' said Manning angrily. "'Have you all got plastic for brains? Over a dozen men spend weeks researching these damn horse faces, and only one of you has the sense to see the evidence of his own eyes?' "'Maybe we should turn in our spades,' said Stoworth. Manning glared at him. "'Maybe you should, if you think this isn't serious. Let's get this clear. These old horse faces that so many of you think are just as quaint as could be have been building in exactly the same style as the outsiders. Quaint, are they? Harmless, too, I suppose.' He stood with his hands on his hips, dropped his head, and took a long, deep breath. When he looked up again, his forehead was furrowed into an intense frown. "'Gentlemen, as I call you from force of habit, we've been finding dead cities of the outsiders for centuries. They were all over God knows how many galaxies before your ancestors or mine had stopped playing with their tails. As far as we can tell, they had a civilization as tightly knit as our own, and probably stronger. And sometime, about forty thousand years ago, they started pulling out.' They left absolutely nothing behind but empty buildings and a few crumbling bits of machinery. And we've been following those remains ever since we got out of our own star system. Well, we just may have found them at last, right here on Hurlage. Now what do you think of that? No one said anything for a minute. Ryanson looked down at Mara, caught her smile, and stood up. I don't think the Hurlage are the outsiders, he said calmly. Manning shot a sharp glance at him. "'You saw the photos?' "'Yes, I saw them. That's outsiders' work all right, or something a lot like it. But it doesn't necessarily prove that these—how many of them are there? Twenty-five? I don't think these creatures are the outsiders. We've traced their history back practically to the point of complete barbarism. Their culture was never once high enough to get them off this planet, let alone to let them spread all over among the stars.' Manning waited for him to finish. Then he turned back to the rest of the men in the room and spread his hands. "'Now that, gentlemen, just shows how much we've found out so far.' He looked over at Ryanson again. "'Has it occurred to you, Lee, that if those horses are the outsiders, that maybe they know a little more than we do? I suppose you're going to say you had a telepathic hook-up with one of them, and you didn't see a thing to make you suspicious.' "'But just remember that they've been using telepathy for several thousand years, "'and that you hardly know what you're doing when you try it. "'Look, I don't trust them. "'If they're the outsiders, they've got maybe a hundred thousand years' head start on us scientifically. "'There may be only a couple dozen of them, but we don't know how strong they are.' "'That's if they're really the outsiders,' said Ryanson. "'Manning nodded his head impatiently.' "'Yes, that's what I'm saying, if they're the outsiders, which looks like a sensible conclusion. Or do you have a better one?' "'Well, I don't know if it's better,' said Ryanson. "'It may not even be as attractive, for that matter. But have you considered that maybe when the outsiders pull out of this area, they simply moved on elsewhere? We're so used to seeing dead cities that we think automatically that the outsiders must be dead, too.' which I suppose is what's bothering you about finding the Hurlogy here alive. But it might be worse. That whole empire could simply have moved on to this area. We could be on the edge of it right now, ready to run head-on into a hundred star systems, just crowded with the outsiders. Manning stared at him, and the expression on his face was not quite anger. Something like it, but not anger. The ruins we found here were built by the Hurlogy, Ryanson said. I saw them building when I was linked with Harong, and these are the same structures. But the design was copied from older buildings, and I don't know how far back I'd have to search the memories, before they originally got that kind of approach to design, maybe back before they developed telepathy. But this race isn't as old as the outsiders. They came out of barbarism thousands of years after the outsiders, and left those dead cities we've been finding. The chances are that if the Hurlogy were influenced by the outsiders, it was some time around thirty thousand years ago, which means the outsiders came this way when they left those cities. That would mean that we're following them, and we might catch up at any time. He stopped for a moment, and then said, We're faster than they were, 
and we have no idea where they may have settled again. One more starfall further beyond the edge, and we may run into one of their present outposts. But this isn't it. Not yet. Manning was still staring at Ryanson, but it was a curious stare. "'You're pretty sure that what you've been getting out of that horse-face's head is real,' he said levelly. "'You trust them?' Ryanson nodded. Harong was really afraid. That was real. I felt it myself. And the rest of it was real, too. I could see the whole racial memory there. And nobody could have been making that up, if you'd experienced that. "'Well, I didn't,' Manning said shortly. "'And I don't think I trust them.' He paused, and after a moment frowned. "'But this direct linkage business does seem to be the best way we have of checking on them. I want you to get busy, Lee, and go after that horse's thoughts for us. Don't let him drive you out again. If he's hiding something, get in there and see what it is. Above all, don't trust him. If these things are the outsiders, they could be bluffing us.' Manning stopped talking and thought a minute. He looked up under raised eyebrows at Ryanson. "'And be careful, Lee. I'm counting on you.' Ryanson ignored his parental gaze and turned instead to Mara. "'We'll try it again tomorrow,' he said. "'Get in a requisition for a telepathy this afternoon. Make sure we'll have one ready to go first thing in the morning. I'll check back with you about an hour after we leave here today.' She looked up at him, surprised. "'Check back? Why?' "'I put in a requisition myself yesterday.' wine from Cluster Two, Vintage 86. I was hoping for some company. She smiled. All right. Manning was ending the session. Carl, be sure to get those studies of the outsiders' artifacts together for me by tonight, and I am going to hand back your reports to each of the rest of you. Go through them and watch for those inconsistencies you skipped over the first time. We may be able to turn up something else that doesn't check out. Go over them carefully. All the reports were sloppy jobs. You're all trying to work too fast. Ryanson rose with the rest of them, grinning as he remembered how Manning had rushed those reports. Well, that was one of the privileges of authority, delegating fault. He started for the door. Lee, hold it a minute. I want to talk to you alone. Ryanson sat, and when all the others had gone, Manning came back and sat down opposite him. He slowly took out a cigarette and lit it. "'My last pack till the next spacer makes touchdown,' he said. "'Sorry I can't offer you one, but I'm a fiend for the things. "'I know they're supposed to be non-habit-forming these days, "'but I'm a man of many vices.' "'Ryanson shrugged, waiting for him to come to the point. "'I guess it makes me a bit more open-minded "'about what the members of my staff do,' Manning went on. "'You know, why should I crack down on drinking or smoking, for instance, "'when I do it myself?' "'I'm glad you see it that way,' Ryanson said dryly. "'Why do you want me to stay?' Manning exhaled a long plume of smoke slowly, watching it through narrowed eyes. "'Well, even though I'm pretty easy going about these things, I do try to keep an eye on you. When you come right down to it, I'm responsible for every man who's with me out here.' He stopped and laughed shortly. "'Not that I'm as altruistic as that sounds, of course. You know me, Lee. But when you're in a position of authority, you have to face the responsibilities.' You understand me? You have to protect your own reputation back at Cluster Headquarters, Ryanson said. Well, yes, of course. You get into a pattern of thinking eventually. Sort of a fatherly feeling, I suppose. Though I've never even been on the parentage rolls back on the inworlds. But I mean it. it. It happens. I get that feeling. And I'm getting a bit worried about you, Lee. Ryanson could see what was coming now. He sat further back into the chair and said, why? Manning frowned with concern. I've been noticing you with Mara lately. You seem pretty interested in her. Is she one of those vices you were telling me about, Manning? said Ryanson quietly. You want to warn me to stay away from her? Manning shook his head, a quick gesture dismissing the idea. No, Lee, not at all. She's not that kind of a woman. And that's my point. I can see how you look at her, and you're on the wrong track. When you're out here on the edge, you don't want a wife. What I need is some good healthy vice. Is that what you mean? Manning sat forward. That puts it pretty clearly. Yeah, that's about it. Lee, you're building up some strong tensions on this job, and don't think I'm not aware of it. Telepathing with that horse face is getting rough, judging from what you've told me. I think you should go get good and drunk and kick up hell tonight. 
"'And take one of the town women. "'They're always available. "'Do you good. "'I mean it.' "'Ryanson stood up. "'Maybe tomorrow night,' he said. "'Tonight I'm busy. "'With Mara.' He turned and walked toward the door. "'I'd suggest you get busy with someone else,' Manning said quietly behind him. "'I'm really telling you this for your own good, believe it or not.' Ryanson turned at the door and regarded the man coldly. "'She's not interested in you, Manning,' he said. He went out and shut the door calmly behind him. Manning could be irritating with his conceited posing, but his veiled threats didn't bother Ryanson. In any case— he had something else on his mind just now. He had finally remembered what it had been about the carvings of the Herlegy building in the photo that had touched a memory within him. There was a strong similarity to the carvings that he had seen, through Tebron's eyes, outside the temple of Kor. The symbols of Kor, Tebron had called them, copied from the works of the old ones. The Outsiders? End of chapter 4